Good to have you there. This is the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN Television. You are on to the news on the air. I am Fulusho Taiwo. You're welcome. The church has been described as a pillar that needs to serve as a voice in these trying times. Uh, the Right Reverend Dapo Ashaju, the Vice Chancellor of the Ajaye Crowder University, or your reiterated this while preaching at the Holy Communion service in commemoration of the 75th birthday for the former primate of all Nigeria Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Peter Jasper Akiola, held at St. Andrew's Anglican Church Presidential Hilltop, Abelkuta, the August State Capital. The preacher described the celebrant as a visionary, missionary, and disciplinary who the church is in need of, especially now that the country is passing through trying times. He also harped on the achievement of the celebrant and charged him to stand as the Caleb of our time, stating that it is one of his duty as a retired church father the ebullient church father prayed to God that he gives the celebrant longevity, good earth, and sound mind to continue to do the work of God. Present at the service were bishops, family members, and church members. As Christians, it is important to have a Bethel, as Bethel is a place of revelation, God's abode, personal renewal, change, new potentials, rest, reassurance, and also a place of first encounter with God, where vows and altars are made. This was the assertion made by the Bishop of Ijebu Southwest, the Right Reverend Baba Tunde Ogumba Nwo, while delivering a sermon at the Cathedral Church of the Advent during the monthly Power Night Vigil in Abuja. According to Bishop Ugumba, Christians have a clearer picture of who God is in Jesus Christ as Jesus is the key to salvation, health, and the way to prosperity. The guest preacher further stressed on the promises of God adding that God's promises in the year 2019 to believers are unchanged as promises are given against imagination. God's promises are yes and amen in the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the promises of God for you in 2019? I assure you, they are unchanging. They remain the same. From generation to generation, His promises are yea and amen. Are you worried about 2019 or the years ahead? Do you know God is already there? What about your job and business? What about your relationship and your health? Fear not. Do you know he goes ahead of you? Hallelujah. Remember the promises made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. He remember the promises made to Isaac in Genesis 26. Now he renewed those promises. To Jacob in Genesis 28, the unchanging promises that he moved to bless him. What were these promises? He says he will give them a land. He says their children and descendants shall be blessed. I point of the program includes praises, worship, prayer, exhortation, testimonies, and special numbers. Charity, they say, begins at home. St. Philip's Anglican Church, Team 6, Guarimpa, Abuja Dances, has taken the bull by the horn, has stormed the streets to demonstrate God's grace and love to the unsaved around the vicinity of the church as they were well equipped not only with the word of God, but also with physical materials to meet the needs of the people. 
uh, the vicar of the church, the Reverend Canon Ovier Ezimerwe, in his welcome address, appreciated those who handled the invitation and he throws more light on the reason for the outreach with the theme Grace Invasion. What we have come here to do, the Lili Muzona Tare, is to also showcase the practical act of grace. Munaso Monuna Muku are selling the Lili and Harry Allah. Just the way God gave us salvation for free. Commander Allah Yaba Mucheto Kyota. That's how we are giving you clothes for free. Ahaka Nema Mumuna Baku Kayasa Wayanzu Kyota. Giving you food for free. I've been China Chi Kyota. Giving you retouch cards for free. The Mubaku Katikuma Kyota. It is free. Kyota, but it costs the church something. Ama. No ecclesia, Muchina Kudi de Muiwana Bune. The church spent money to get this thing. Muchina Kudi, Achiki, Ajumu, Mu e ecclesia. Then we are giving it to you for free. Amamuna, Iumukumuna Baku Kyota. In the same way, Commander Jesus, Isa Al Masiu, gave us salvation for free. Speaker of the event, Barista Kodi Ojuchiku, stressed the importance of Christ in the activities of mankind. The message was well received as over 80 persons gave their lives to Christ when the preacher made an altar call. The person that made this promise that says, come unto me, I will give you rest. Let me tell you what I come to know about him. He is not weak. He is not unable to fulfill what he promised to do. He is not the person that depends on another person for success of what he plans to do. He has all it takes to fulfill his promise. He has spiritual power, physical power, material power to fulfill his promise. When he said, come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. He has the rest to give to everybody among us. And when he does give that, he will not become bankrupt after giving you. He still has sufficient to give all the more. And the call is given to him. He says again, come. Gentlemen, not come to doctors. No. If you come to him, he will give you more than you're asking for. If you don't accept him, don't expect anything from him, but I tell you whether you But whether you receive him, you don't receive him, he's going to heal you anyway. He will deliver you anyway. At least 300 beneficiaries received free gift items such as food, clothing, Richard cats, free medical services, among others. The event was attended by both Muslims and Christians alike as they all sing and danced. Lawyers in some civil society organizations stormed the premises of the Nigeria Bar Association Abuja to protest against the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN Justice Walter Noge, and his replacement with the acting CJN Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad. The interest groups include national interest defenders and lawyers in defense of democracy. The protesters held banners which called for the reconvening of the National Judicial Council, NJC, as well as the sack of the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN. Following the suspension of the Chief Justice of the Federation, CJN, Walter Onogen, Senator representing Bayesa East, Ben Mure Bruce has said President Muhammadu Buhari must be stopped. Bruce said if Buhari was not stopped, he may remove the Oni of Ife or Ba'eni to Adeyeye and the Sultan of Sokoto, the Obi of Onisha. Buhari had last Friday suspended on Nagan 
and appointed Tanko Mohammed as acting CGN. Explaining his reason, the president said he suspended Onoge following an order from the Code of Conduct Tribunal, CCT, asking him to wield the big stick. In his speech sent to newsmen, Buhari said the order demanded that the CGN be suspended pending the determination of his ongoing trial at the tribunal. However, Bruce in a tweet wrote, we watch as Abacha killed and removing anyone who stood his way, and we said we are not Yoruba or from Abiola's family. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has excluded all its national commissioner from the coalition of the presidential poll results and other strands of elections. The commission has also decided to throw open the situation room to accredited observers, civil society organizations, and the media. It was gathered that neither the widely criticized National Commissioner Amino Zakari nor any of the National Commissioners will be involved in the collation of presidential poll results. The INEC source also stated that the Commission met on Saturday and resolved to throw open the situation room to be recalled that Zakari had been widely criticized weeks ago after she was appointed as the head of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Collation Center. We shall now go on a short commercial break. We shall be back with more stories. Please stay with us. The Independent National Electoral Commission has spelled out the voting procedures for the 2019 general elections via its verified Twitter handle, INEC Nigeria. The following are the seven steps as stated by INEC. Step 1. Upon arrival at the polling unit, join the queue and present yourself to the INEC official at the polling unit, who will determine whether you are at the correct polling unit and check if the photograph on the permanent voter's card matches your face. If satisfied, he or she will direct you to the next INEC official. Step two, the official will request for your PVC to confirm that your card is genuine and your details using the smart card reader. He or she will ask you to place your finger on the card reader to confirm that the PVC belongs to you by ascertaining the card reader will contain the name, photograph, and fingerprints of all those registered in their polling unit. Step 3. You will then meet the next official who will request for your PVC to confirm that your name and your details are in the voter's register. Your name will be ticked and your PVC returned to you. He or she will then apply indelible ink to the cubicle of your appropriate finger for that election to show that you have been accredited to vote. If your name is not found on the register, you will not be allowed to vote. Step four, the presiding officer stamps, signs, and endorses the date at the back of the ballot paper. The presiding officer will roll the ballot paper inwardly with the printed side inward and give it to you. He or she will then direct you to the voting cubicle where you will vote in secret. Step five, you will stain your appropriate finger for the election with the ink provided. Then use your stained finger to mark the space or ballot provided on the ballot paper for your preferred candidates or party. Roll the marked ballot paper in the manner the presiding officer gave you. Step six, then leave the voting cubicle and drop the ballot paper in the ballot box in full view of people at the polling unit. Step 7. You will then leave the polling unit or wait if you so choose in an orderly and peaceful manner to walk the process up to the declaration of results. Note: 
the results of each polling unit shall be pasted at the unit and for everyone to see. You are welcome back. And we want to thank you for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. To be up to date with our news and other programs, please download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And now to some foreign news. A rare and powerful tornado that struck Havana killed three people and left 172 injured. Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel, who toured the darkened streets of Havana, Cuba, in the pre dawn hours visiting emergency crews, said that the damage to the Cuban capital from the tornado was severe, adding that several emergency teams were working hard to restore power to blackout areas. The tornado overturned vehicles, uprooted trees, knocked down lampposts, and left part of the city in the dark. In the city's Luiano neighborhood, storm debris, including parts of a balcony, ripped off a whole building, blocked the streets. At Hijaz, De Galicia maternity hospital staff were forced to evacuate the building due to storm damage. The tornado spawned by a powerful storm that originated in the Gulf of Mexico hit western Cuba with winds of up to 100 kilometers, that is 62 miles per hour. People described the tornado as having the sound of a jet engine and reported feeling changes in the environmental pressure when it arrived. And now to sports. The Federation of African Football CAF has reportedly taken the decision to push back the start date of the 2019 African Cup of Nations by a week. The Continental Tournament is now set to begin on June 21 instead of June 14 and will run until July 19. Egyptian Football Association Vice President Ahmed Shubir announced the decision on his private television sports program. He explained that the decision was taken as a number of North African countries asked the CAF to delay the opening of the tournament for one week because of fasting in Ramadan as well as celebrating Eid al-Fitr. The decision will also give Egypt an extra week to prepare for the tournament, having only been awarded the rights earlier this month. The North African country won a vote over South Africa, their only rival, to stage the finals after Cameroon were stripped of the rights in November 2018. Still on 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will know their group face opponents at the 32nd African Cup of Nations finals on 12th April as was approved by the Confederation of African Football for the staging of the draw. The ceremony which will take place in the Egyptian capital Cairo will see the 24 qualified teams drawn into six groups of four teams each with the two top place teams in each group alongside the best for third place teams progressing to the round of 16. Egypt 2019 will be the first 24-team Africa Cup of Nations in history, with matches scheduled to be played in eight venues between 21st June and 19th July. Nigeria's Super Eagles have already made sure of a place in the finals ahead of the final round of the qualifying matches scheduled for late March 2019. Nigeria hosts Seychelles at the Stephen Keshi Stadium Asaba on 23rd March in what is purely an academic exercise. 
Manchester United defenders Antonio Valencia and Matteo Damian are set to leave Old Trafford this week before the transfer window closes. Valencia and Damian have barely featured for United since Ole Gunnar uh, Soxger took over from former Red Devils manager Josh Mourinho in December. According to the Sun, both Valencia and Damian are expected to leave Manchester United, mind you, because Soxger is ready to let unwanted players leave the club. Valencia has struggled for game time this season, having fallen behind Ashley Young and Diogo Dalot in the pecking order, while chairman has drawn interest from Spanish La Liga club Valencia. And so that's it on this edition of the news on the hour. We want to thank you and thank you profusely for watching. I am full of sure Taiwo. Please mend it. Don't end it in a hurry. God bless you.